Welcome to part two of my path to Journeyman Smith. What we did last time is I forged out my test performance blade. Not the one I'm actually using for my test, but the one that I wanted to personally use as a test before I actually made the one I'm gonna use for my actual official test. Well, if you didn't see part one of this series, this blade might look a little funny to you because it has a hockey stick type curve to it. That's because we heat treated it, we chopped two by four all the way through, and then I did the 90 degree bend test. Now today what we're gonna do is the actual test itself with Master Smith E.J. Hendrickson over at the Moran Foundation Guild. The knife that I'm gonna be making for my actual test is basically an exact copy of this one in style. Few things that I'm gonna do different is I'm gonna add a little bit of a handle swell right here. Instead of it being an arc, it's gonna be kind of like a curved M. That way I have a little more grip. I noticed when I was chopping the two by four and when I did some practice cuts with a rope that I needed a little more girth to my handle. So that's gonna change and the taper is gonna change a little bit. If you can notice this blade curved mostly up at the point, I want it to curve more in the middle. So I'm gonna add less taper to the entire knife so that it bends evenly and I'm going to heat treat it uh, a little differently. Instead of edge quenching it like I did on this one, which I really didn't like, I don't like those flaming quenches as I stated before, I'm going to heat treat the entire thing and then temper the whole blade at 400 degrees, two different cycles of two hours in the kiln, and then I'm going to actually use a torch and selectively soften up the back should give me about the same results, but I feel a little better doing it that way. That way the entire blade is heat treated correctly and then I'm selectively tempering instead of leaving some absolute unheat treated areas of the blade. So it's a Saturday morning. It's the morning of the tool sale here at Mount Phillip Metalworks and I have to go do my test over at the Moran Foundation. Now I show up there uh, there's a bunch of guys that I know, some that I don't know. I showed them my knife. They were all very supportive and excited that I was going to do my test that day. I also got to see a quick sneak peek of the new Moran Foundation building that they built. It's absolutely enormous and just very well thought out. I can't wait for that facility to be up and running. About a half an hour after I got there, my master smith, EJ Hendrickson, showed up and said, hey, let's go take a look at the building. And right after that, let's just go ahead and get this test done. We did the test itself in Moran. Bill Moran, the founder of the ABS's actual home shop. His shop that he used when he was forging knives. And I was very excited. I love the history of Maryland Knife Makers. I love being a part of it. And I actually knew Mr. Moran when I was a wee child. I met him a few times. So doing it in his home shop meant a lot to me. However, the one tricky thing is... The ceilings are super low and not only that there's antlers hanging from the ceiling and all kinds of stuff like that so when we went to do the rope cut test which is the first test i was pretty nervous because i do this big full swoopy swing i'm used to swinging swords and that's how i did all my tests on the rope itself here however there the ceilings are very low so i had to come at a, at a much steeper angle than i wanted and kind of adjust my angle as I came down to make the cut. And I was pretty nervous. Let's see how I do. Once it's hanging, we don't want it to come apart. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Look at that. Well done. Good enough. Easy peasy. Well done. Oh, the edge of your knife, so I know it's you don't have any problem there at all. No. Yeah, sure, that won't hurt that. No. Well, let's done. get our two by four and all right. make What's a, your we'll make a mess here. All right, the rope cut went great. I was nervous. I thought maybe I was gonna have to take a couple tries at it, but I did that kind of adjusted angle, cut right through, no problem. Next up is the two by four. For the 2x4 test, what I have to do is I have to cut completely through two different times on the 2x4. I started off by standing up, wasn't very comfortable, so I took a knee and held the board at an angle and came down at about 45 and just rotated until I got through, flipped it over, cut it all the way through. Did that twice, no big deal. The only question was, would my edge hold up? 
Do you have a preference how I do this, by hand or in a vice? I don't care how you okay. do it. Didn't affect the edge at all, so that's fine. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Since I was doing all my testing at the Moran Foundation, and it was the morning of a meeting there, I had quite a crowd when I was doing it, which really didn't bother me. I'm used to performing in front of a crowd. However, doing this next step in front of the crowd was a little nerve-wracking. Doing the 90-degree bend test and a vice. Do I, should I just put it in the jaws or should I do two pieces of wood on either side? Well, it's up to you. Okay. I usually do it just this way. But <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. I shouldn't have any problem with it. Yeah. And and how far up? Yeah. Oh, four inches. Four inches? Like yeah. here. I don't have all the shape. I don't have all the shape. I don't have all the shape. That is really nice. So that's the one that Jerry's in there. I'm working on the sheet. You should have a pair of glasses on, not that I expect anything to happen, but... Okay. I'm very confident. Gentlemen, you've got your glasses. Jay? Yeah, I got that. Mine are safety glasses. Mine are good for me. Just shoot a little light or something. Okay. down, take her down. that he can use if he wants to. But well, don't do it until, until you time. take the knife to the show. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, I still have them. Because you've got to take the knife in here. Can I get you to sign the knife? Just, sure.
Well, no excuses now. I passed my ABS performance test. Mr. Hendrickson signed off on it, so we're good to go. My only thing now to do is to make five beautiful, well-presented knives for Master Smiths to judge at Blade Show 2022 in June. All right, where we left off last time with this particular blade, I was telling you at the end of the video that I didn't think this blade was gonna make the cut for my ABS test set. And the reason being is I thought it just didn't have enough me in it and it just wasn't impressive. So what I decided to do with this particular blade was to run it through some different steps, use it kind of as a test piece, and see if I could get it to condition where I felt better with it. What I started by doing was using a waterfall platen like this that I kind of put together with a bunch of different attachments from Broadbeck and made it work. I put a slight radius on the end of the platen and then I was just using the knife flat on here to kind of radius over my plunge lines, make everything nice and crisp. And then when I was surprised how well that worked, I went ahead and profiled the whole thing. I used some hand sanding down here and I got this thing looking pretty sharp and I like it a lot. So I've kind of changed my mind on it now and I think we're gonna go ahead and move forward with this as one of the test pieces. So the next step is to decide what kind of guard this piece is gonna get. So I got myself a bar of copper. It's 3 8 of an inch thick, almost a half inch by an inch. And it should make a really nice guard on this little tiny knife. The first thing I gotta do is go ahead and cut it to length. I'll leave myself a little extra length and then we're gonna measure the slot and get it milled in and put this knife together. One of the things I really have to be careful on is the fit and finish of how the guard meets the blade. It has to be super flush, no gaps, no shadows, no nothing. And that's really been something that I've kind of struggled with in making knives that are up to this level. I have done really nice knives in the past. However, this set has to be perfect. So at this point, I've done a lot of hand sanding on my actual guards and the blades to get everything fit perfectly. If you would have told me a couple years ago that I'd be hand sanding every blade, I would have been like, no way, I wouldn't believe you. And if you told me I was hand sanding my guards, I would have told you you were flat out crazy. But that's literally what it takes to make knives at this level. So let's go ahead and get started by getting a slot in this piece of copper, get it fitted, and then move on to shaping the guard and the handle. So not only am I filing the slot in to fit the tang, but I'm also creating a slight shape like this inside the slot itself. That way, this is the handle side, this is the blade side, that way when I hammer this copper guard on, this is going to peel out and press really tightly so where my tang meets the shoulder of my knife, the choil, or the ricasso it's gonna have a perfectly snug fit and that copper is a pretty soft metal so it should be able to bend just fine. It'll leave a little bit of a standing burr up on the top and then we'll just hand sand that away and everything should fit nice and plush. Carefully checking my tang as I go. My tang is tapered so it's gonna get tighter and tighter as it goes up but once I get it about halfway, I can start beating it on. 
to I have to say to anyone who's considering doing this JS route, do it while you're young. Man, my arms hurt from all the hand sanding and I'm getting old. So I highly recommend if you're gonna do this, do it at a young age. But even if you're an old guy like me, it's a great process to go through and it teaches you a lot. I'm learning something with every little step of every knife I'm making. All right, even though I have a lot of fitting left to do on this guard, let's go ahead and do our first press fit on. I highly doubt it's gonna go all the way down. But the little marks and rubs from the steel tang to the copper are going to show me exactly where I need to take material off. So we're going to go ahead and place that on. Made myself a little wooden tool, drilled a hole and then cut up to it. I'm going to place that on there and drive it down. Alright, I don't want to distort this guard too much. but that's gonna give us a good idea. Clamp your blade in a piece of leather so you don't mess your blade up. I wanna take a quick second, time out from this build to tell you guys about today's sponsor and that's Red Label Abrasive, guys. You see me wearing the hats, you see me wearing the hoodies. Red Label is the abrasive company you need to be working with. I work with them on everything from the belts we use on our sanders to the hand sandpaper that I finish out my blades all the way out to a 1500 and sometimes 2000 grit finish. They offer the best products, and better than that, they don't waste their time making flashy promotion videos. They're all about getting the products that you need in your hands for the job that you're doing. Say you're a woodworker, or you're sanding on aluminum, or hardened blades like me. You tell them what you're doing, they make sure they get the products in your hands that are going to work the first time. Don't waste time buying other abrasives that you get and you ended up not using them because they don't work well with your material. Contact Red Label and tell them what you're doing. They're going to get the products in your hands that you need. And I can't be doing any of this ABS journey without Red Label abrasives. Look them up. They're the best. After a little bit of polishing and some fiddling, here is our beautiful little almond shaped copper knife guard. So it's got the almond shape on the guard portion, oval shape where the handle will fit, and from here I could pretty much be done. I like it a lot, but one thing that I usually do to a lot of these type of knife guards, either the symmetrical ones or the asymmetrical ones, is I like to bend down this guard portion just a little bit, just a little finger covering. I think it turns it in to a very flowing uh, organic piece instead of looking very mechanical with all straight lines. It then has a little curve down, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll wait until I get the knife blade further along to really make that decision on how far I'm going to turn it down and see how it fits with the wood handle. So here it is. Very happy. Let me show you how it fits. fits pretty well. Now it looks like it's kind of at the wrong angle because right now it doesn't have a handle. But once I put the handle that droops down a little bit, it's really going to fit in nicely. And you can see here how it'll benefit from this being curved just, just a tad. So here's another knife that I've been working on. It's what I would call about 90%. You can see it has a very similar style guard to this. So I did all this straight, then I heat this up with a torch, bend them over, bend them over, and then clean it all up with hand sanding. Um, one of the things that 
I really like about this project and this test set is that it is a set. And if you think of this kind of like an art show gallery where things all have a theme, so kind of should your knife set. Now, if you're going to look at my knife set and you look at piece one and you look at piece five, then, and you put them side by side and only look at those two, you might not see a relationship between the two so much. But if you put them in order, one, two, three, four, five, you're gonna see kind of like an evolution chart. Although if you look at these two knives, this piece and this piece, they don't look similar at all. However, the guards are basically fundamentally the same. One is only one-sided, one is two, but and one is much narrower, one's copper, one's steel. However, once I bend this up, they are made exactly the same, all on the grinder, then a little bit of filing to touch it up and then hand sanding to clean it from there. And the handles will be a little different. However, from the progression, as I go, you're gonna see kind of an evolution where I go from my standard look to more of an ABS look. And I think that's kind of what I'm gonna go for for this set. It's pretty fun to do something kind of themed. It's not like every single one's gonna have a flower engraved on it and that's a the theme. The theme is kind of evolution of me as a knife maker, from kind of what I was to hopefully much, much better. Here we are. We got the wood handle fit to the tang. It's super tight. I can't even really pull it off. I'll have to tap it off. That's how I prefer to do it. I prefer to get the negative space in here fitting the tang so tight that this handle can never move around so once I sand it to shape that's where it is. I know some people prefer to mill out their slot a little large then put Vaseline on the tang and epoxy in the slot and then let it sit and then you can pull your blade right out and you have a perfect slot and I certainly don't find any problem with that. Um, if my slot and my handle got a little too big I probably would do that but I prefer to get the actual slot super tight. One thing that happened is that my slot got a little off angle so first thing before I do any contouring or any shaping of the handle is I'm going to go ahead and re-square this and make sure it lines up just right with the blade. So this is the very first knife I forged in the last video and while I kind of set it aside I decided I'm using it as a practice test piece and try some things on it and let's go ahead and finish it out. So at this point I got my blade out to about a 400 grit finish. From here I'm going to use a waterfall platen to start truing up my plunges. Now I'm not qualified at all to teach people how to use this, I've only done it a few times. But what I can do is give you the basics. Basically I'm working on this edge here, keeping my blade nice and flat and slowly pushing up to give my plunge a slight radius. I can also do a little bit of course correction if my plunges are off by a little bit, which they're not, they're very good. So basically all I'm doing is lightly putting a radius using this corner that's been slightly rounded over. I'm using a slightly worn 400 grit. It's gonna be running at a very slow speed and I'm just gonna take my time and get it done. One thing I do wanna say is that if you're not an experienced knife grinder, don't have a lot of time on these grinders, don't attempt a waterfall yet. Do it all by hand. This is actually pretty dangerous to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing because your points facing towards the way the belt is spinning. So it could catch. You wanna make sure that you come down slowly and really keep a lot of tension and pressure on your blade nice and flat so that you don't rock up. If you rock up and that point sticks in, it's gonna throw it back at you and that's not good at all. So be careful.
So in my opinion, the waterfall platen is in no way a cheat or a way to skip out on the hand sanding. It's literally should be used as a tool just to get you closer. There's still a ton of hand sanding and you really should rely on your hand sanding to get you finished. You should not rely on the waterfall platen to create your final finish. You still need to hand sand. You still need to get all those tiny little grooves out by hand. There's almost no way to do it other than doing it by hand. And when you hand sand a blade, it just has a finish that can't be described unless you've done it. The first sword that I ever hand sanded was actually my Gladius the first year I went to Blade Show. And I couldn't believe, I took it up to like a 2000 grit on the machines, on the big Bader sanders. I took it way up in grit. But when I took it back down to say like an 800 and 1200 by hand, it was so much nicer. I can't even explain to you how much more handmade it felt and it just took it from a mechanical piece to a very organic handmade finish and it was so much nicer so no matter what I used to kind of think about waterfall platens they most certainly are not a cheat and you still have a ton of hand sanding to do all right, since the blades actually turn out quite nice, let's go ahead and make a guard. And let's stick with the theme of this piece and try something new. In this case, we're gonna be using some bronze for the guard. I like the color of bronze a lot more than brass. It's just my personal preference. Let's go ahead and get this thing slotted and fitted to the blade. All right, with the guard nice and tightly fit, that's where we're gonna go ahead and end today's video. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. It's been pretty nerve wracking. I hadn't really done any rope cutting or any kind of bend test previously, except on some sword blades. So this actually should have been easy, but I was pretty stressed out about it. I'm really happy that I passed and I'm on to the next phase. I got a couple of knives just about done. I'd say they're 95% done. The reason I'm not finishing them all the way out just yet is I'm waiting for my etching kit to set up to be able to etch my name onto each blade. And I don't want to do that when they're all glued up. So I have all my blades that I have finished so far sitting in a case, not glued up. And as soon as that stencil comes in for me to put my name on my blades, I'll do that, do a little more hand sanding, and then we'll get everything glued up. For my next video in this series, I'll be making a frame-handled, coffin-handled Bowie knife. I'm going to do that start to finish for you guys to see the process all the way through, and we'll even have some beauty shots at the end, because by then I should have everything ready to go. If you guys haven't seen part one of this video series of my path to J.S. Smith, be sure to click right here and check out that video, and don't forget this logo right here that's the one you need to click to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos. Thanks, guys.